Hey everybody, Robbie Pruitt here with Antler King. Well, I hope you're enjoying this series that we've been running. I got Mr. Don Kiske here with Whitetail Freaks. Um, Don, let's talk about kind of backwood plots here. We got a, I get a lot of customers call in. They have a little backwoods plot, pretty shaded area, poor soil. Uh, you know, with Antler King, we have two products. We have our No Sweat, which is an annual, and a Game Changer Clover, which is a four-year perennial. Them two products will actually grow very well in a shaded area, poor soil area. But even with that being said, the more nutrients you can give to that soil, the mm -hmm. higher that pH you can get up close to that 7.0, the more forage you're going to get out of them, them plants. Uh, I guess my question to you this week is, you know, you have the farming background. I know you know this with the back of your hand, but how important is getting that pH of that soil up and the proper fertilizer on them plants? Absolutely. It means absolutely everything. Whether you're farming to make 280 bushel corn or you're wanting this green plot to taste really good to the deer, absolutely. the fertility level is everything. The pH, you can't grow a, a plot with pH as a 5.3. Exactly. It ain't going to work. Plus, it's not going to taste good even if you do get it to grow. Yes. That's so it. I treat my food plots just how I treat everything I do farming. I spend as much money as I can to make the return back on my ground. Right. But when I go in to plant a food plot, I might even treat it even more so. <laughs> make sure it's high phosphorus, high potassium, yep. pH is right. Yep. Even look into some of your foiler fertilizers and stuff like that. Absolutely. I know you guys got some of that yes, stuff. Yes, we do. Yep. So you can do a lot of things over the top of the plant to even help them out. Right. Like clover, spraying that over the top. Yeah. You know, bringing it back real looking green and yep, yep, and stuff like that. So I don't skimp when it yep. comes to my food plots. Right. I spend everything I can. But like you said, some of your plots way back in the woods, mm -hmm. you can skimp on machinery. You, you right. can take a hand rake in and do a lot of good Absolutely. to get soil and seed contact, but yeah. do not skimp on the fertilizers. Yeah. You have to do that step. And what I hear always people telling me is, I don't check my pH. I add, I just add more fertilizer. Well. If your pH is too low and too acidic, you know, you're just throwing money on the ground because that pH needs to be up as close or as right on that 7.0 for it to be able to utilize 100% of that fertilizer you're That's putting right. on. So if, if you're not doing the pH test kit and adding the lime to raise that pH up and you're adding fertilizer and even more fertilizer than what you really need, you're still just throwing that money away because the, the plants yeah. can't utilize it. Hey, when it comes to our farming program, we grid sample on every acre of our entire program. Wow. So, and we're farming like 1,400 acres, so you can imagine how much work there is in this grid sampling all that. Yeah. But you want every imagine. acre to be as perfect as you can because it's, it's highly important to have it producing the most. You know? Absolutely, you gotta have that. So one more point I would say to people, in the last few years, we talked about this earlier about sulfur. Yes. Sulfur is not in the atmosphere now, the coal plants. Mm -hmm. And you know, they've got this no sulfur diesel fuel they're using. Yep. We used to get it out of the rain. Yep. Well, now you're not getting it. Sulfur is probably almost as important as N, P, and K now. Wow. And we started putting in our soybeans. We're jumping our soybean yields 20 bushel per acre. Holy cow, With wow. the addition of sulfur. So Man. keep that in mind when it comes to food plots. And you, there's a lot of sulfur sources out there. Yep. I use the best one I can find is AMS, ammonium sulfate. Yep. Because it's already ready for the plant. The sulfur is already in a form that it can use. Yep. If you use elemental sulfur, that takes two or three years sometimes to break down. But if you use the sulfur from an AMS, it's just a dry powder, basically, yep. and you put like 150 pounds to the acre on, I think the analysis is a 210024. Okay. So it's got 24 pounds of sulfur per 100. Yep. So we're putting 100 pounds of sulfur on. That gives me about 30 pounds. Wow. 150 pounds of sulfur, or of AMS. AMS. Will give me a, a 30 pounds of sulfur. And That's good to know. So when it comes to your food pots, don't cheat them on sulfur either. That's some great, great information there. Well, I hope you guys have a good day. We'll talk to you soon.